Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third week of April um, YouTube story time for the Santa Public Library. I'm Trisha. I'm going to read you some books today. Today, we're going to be talking about Earth Day. Do you know what Earth Day is? It's a special day we set aside every year to remind ourselves that we live on the planet Earth and that we need to take special care of her. So let me switch my camera. And we're going to read a new book that I just got, The Earth and I. Let's see. Let's move things around so that you can actually see the pictures of this book. Seems like my, my computer's stuck on something. There we go. The Earth and I by Frank Ash. That's who wrote the book and made the pictures on it. And this is a Voyager book. I think move this up a little bit. So you can see it better. How's that? The Earth and I. This is a brand new book. I just got it. The Earth and I are friends. Sometimes we go for long walks together. I tell her what's on my mind. She listens to every word. You see all those animals that are living on the earth with us? Then I listen to her. What's it doing? We just talked about that last, last week, right? Raining. Water is something very important for all of us that live on Earth. We talked about that too. Right? Like magic when it rains and the light is reflected through the raindrops. You can sometimes see a rainbow. We play together in my backyard. It's like it's playing with mud. I help her grow. You planted your garden yet? Sometimes we plant seeds inside till it's warm enough that we can put them outside. And she helps me grow. I sing for her. And she sings for me. I dance for her <laughs> and she dances for me. Oh. What's that? It's not a lot of trash. When she is sad, I am sad. That's a lot of pollution, a lot of trash, people left laying around. Oh, go look. You could clean it up, right? And plant flowers. When she is happy, I am happy. The earth and I are friends. The earth and I, I like that one. 
I was going to read you a poem also. Remember we talked about this last week. It's National Poetry Month. This is a library book and they're poems and drawings by a man named Shel Silverstein. And I just happened to pick the book, Where the Sidewalk Ends. Shel Silverstein is one of my favorites and we have several books, several books by Shel Silverstein. And this is a Harper Collins publishing book. And I'll flip through the pages. You can see that there's lots of cool drawings and lots and lots of poems, <laughs> right? This poem is called, If the World Was Crazy. If the world was crazy, you'd know what I'd eat. A big slice of soup and a whole quart of meat. A lemonade sandwich and then I'd try some roasted ice cream or bicycle pie. A nice notebook sandwich or an underwear roast. An omelet of hats and some crisp cardboard toast. A thick malted milk made from pencils and daisies. That's all that, and that's what I'd eat if the world was crazy. If the world was crazy, you know what I'd wear? A chocolate suit and a tie of eclair. Some marshmallow earmuffs, some licorice shoes, and I'd read a paper of peppermint news. I'd call the boy Susie and I'd call the girls Harry. I'd talk through my ears and I always would carry a paper umbrella for when it, was, when it grew hazy to keep in the rain if the world was crazy. If the world was crazy, you know what I'd do? I'd walk on the ocean and swim in my shoes. I'd fly through the ground and I'd skip through the air. I'd run down the bathtub and bathe on the stairs. When I met somebody, I'd say, goodbye, Joe. And when I was leaving, then I'd say hello. And the greatest of men would be silly and lazy. So I would be the king if the world was crazy. It's an interesting poem, right? Let's see, there was one about spaghetti I wanted to read to you. Think of a spaghetti. Spaghetti, spaghetti all over the place, up to my elbows and up to my face, over the carpet and under the stairs, into the hammock and wound round the stairs. Filling the bathtub and covering the desk, making the sofa a mad mushy mess. The party was ruined, I'm terribly worried. The guests have all, less, have all left, well, unless they were buried. I told them bring presents. I said throw confetti. I guess they heard wrong, because they all threw spaghetti. There's some really fun poems in these books. Check at the library for Shel Silverstein. I'll read one more and then we'll get back to our Earth Day books. This poem is a short poem called Colors. My skin is kind of sortish brown, pinkish, yellowish, white. My eyes are grayish, bluish green, but I'm told they look orange in the night. My hair is reddish, blondish brown, but it's silver when it's wet. And all the colors I am inside have not been invented yet. That's one of my favorites by Shel Silverstein. This book is where the sidewalk ends and I'll return it to the library and you could borrow it and read some poems. <clears throat> Let's read this short book about trash troubles. At Earth Day, we talk a lot about trash and how we need to pick up the earth where we live. <clears throat> Mr. Toddle blew his whistle. It's time to go, said 3J. The corner kids finished their lunches and jumped up. 3J. Gabby and Alex called themselves the corner kids because they lived on opposite corners of the same street. 
Alex and Gabby picked up their trash and put it in the way, put it away in a trash barrel, right? They ran to catch up with 3J. He was already in line. The rest of Mr. Tottle's second graders lined up too. Then went, they walked to the nature center to hunt for insects. Everyone gathered around the guide. Stay on the path, she whispered. Insects sometimes hide under leaves, so keep your eyes open. But remember not to bother them. We just want to find them. We want to make a list in our nature notebooks. That's cool. You could write down all the animals and insects you see. But just then, Alex saw something. Yikes, he said, and he pointed to a lunch bag. It was moving this way and that. Wow, how is the lunch bag moving? There's something in there, said Gabby, and it's alive. Everyone wondered what it could be. The guy carefully reached down and lifted the bag up. Oh, everybody whispered. It was a bird. It looked around and then it flew away. Oh, that bird was stuck in a bag. Everyone smiled. They were happy that the bird wasn't hurt. I wonder how he got stuck in that bag. Trash is trouble, the guide said. Sometimes animals get trapped in it. 3J began to think, what had he done with his lunch bag? He looks a little sad. Then he remembered, that bag could be mine, he said sadly. I don't remember if I threw it away in the trash can. 3J looked around. There was other trash at the nature center. There was even trash floating in the creek. I have an idea, he said. Let's clean up the nature center while we're hunting for insects. The guide smiled. That's a great idea, she said. And everyone agreed. Back at school, 3J told Mr. Toddle that he wanted to pick up more trash. The next day, he made signs. Put your trash here in the garbage can, not here in the water. This book was written by Larry Dane Brimmer and illustrated by Christine Tripp. And this is a rookie choices book. This one's mine, so you can't take it out of the library. It's a nice short little book that reminds us where we should put our trash. <clears throat> Here's another one. 10 things I can do to help my world. I remember. This book is written by Melanie Walsh. And it doesn't have a publisher on it. Let's see. Oh, it's a Candlewick Press book. I remember to turn off the lights when I leave the room. That's to conserve energy. Turning off lights and using more efficient light bulbs saves valuable energy. I try, that's a picture of a sink. What do you suppose they're doing? I try. This book is about helping to conserve things. What comes out of the faucet? I try to turn off the tap when I brush my teeth. Every time you do this, you save 18 glasses of water. That's a lot of water. Remember, we've talked about how important water is to us and the plants, everything that lives. 
I always, oh, look at that apple juice box. You know what this one's going to say, right? Trash, trash can, somebody's apple juice box on the grass. I always throw my trash away. Putting garbage away keeps the world safe and clean. I will feed the birds in the winter. Feeding the birds help them get ready for nesting in the spring. That's something kind you can do to the animals that we share our earth with, right? I use, hmm, it's hard to guess what they're gonna talk about here. This looks like someone's drawing. I use oh, both sides of the paper. If everyone did this, it would greatly reduce the number of trees we use to make paper. It's nice not to waste things, right? If you can draw on both sides of the paper. I remind everyone to turn off the TV when we're not watching it. That's a good idea. I enjoy, wow, look at this. Looks like some cardboard and some boxes. I enjoy making toys from things around my house. That's called recycling or upcycling. We can reuse lots of things before we have to throw them away. It's a lot of good ideas in this book. I like to walk to school when I can. Avoiding extra car trips saves gas and cuts down on air pollution. Walking is also good exercise. I can plant seeds to help them grow. Planting things helps keep the air clean and healthy. And look at, they've even used recycled containers to put their plants in. This looks like a yogurt container. This looks like an old milk carton, maybe a can or a plastic bottle. It's a good idea. I help. This is recycling. Sort the recycling. There's things that can go in the compost pile. The cans go there. The glass goes there. This is the paper. This is the plastic. I love my world. All because. Oh, I see. Sorry. That was. I love sorting the recycle all because that sentence didn't make sense. Let's go back a page. I help sort the recycling all because I love my world. That makes more sense, right? The flap was already down. I'm going to put that back. Okay. That's called the things I can do to help my world. Let's see, I had one more book that I wanted to share with you today. I'm going to move the camera and turn it to the other one. I have a book that I found that the library didn't have. Let's see, I need to share my screen. This is a book about the Earth. Did you know that the Earth is a planet? Let's see if I can get the book to come up. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. There we go. 
let's see. Oh yeah, how come it's not coming up full screen? That's odd. Well, I guess we can still read it this way. I'm not sure why that's doing that. I am Earth. I am Earth and you live on me. Oh, you know what? I should tell you who wrote this book in case you want to find it. Rebecca and James McDonald. I think we read I Am Spring a couple of weeks ago. I am Earth. And you live on me. On the inside, I am very hot. On the outside, I am the perfect temperature for life. I travel around the sun to keep you warm. As I spin, day turns to night and night turns to day. Did you know that, that the planets spin around the sun? When I tilt away from the sun, it becomes fall and winter. When I tilt back towards the sun, it becomes spring and summer. That's what we have right now is spring. The sun is so big that it holds me and seven other planets in space with something called gravity. Together with moons, comets, asteroids, and other space objects, we make up a solar system. Just like the sun, I have gravity. My gravity keeps the moon circling around me and it holds you onto the ground. Gravity keeps the air you breathe and the water you drink from drifting into space. Without gravity, things would just float away. When you see me from space, I look blue, green, brown, and white. The blue is the water that covers me. The green and the brown are the land with which you live on. And the white is from the clouds and the snow. Clouds drop water onto the land below. And when it gets cold, the clouds drop snowflakes, dusting everything white. Rain and snow fill up the lakes and the rivers, giving all living things water to drink. Even the food you eat is grown in my rich brown soil. I'm very unique, just like you. I have all the right things to keep you healthy and safe, like clean air and food and water. I'm not too hot and I'm not too cold. And I hold you close so that you won't float away. But you, you have to help me by keeping me healthy and clean. What's he doing? He's picking up the trash. Because if I get sick, the air gets sick and the water gets sick and the ground gets sick, and then that's not good for anyone. But right now, I am the only planet that you can live on. And if we work together, we can keep me the best place to live. The back of this book are some facts. Here are some things that you can do to help the earth. Recycle don't litter, reuse, save energy, and don't waste water. There's a lot of other books written by these authors. That's the one we read last week, I think. I am spring. All right. I hope you enjoyed this week's story time on Earth Day. Next week, we're going to do some planting and read about flowers and things that grow. So I'll see you then. Have a good week. Bye, everyone.